There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. Welcome to Preach the Word with Brother Dean Carmichael of Greensboro. And now let's welcome our dear friend, Brother Dean. First of the Gospels. And I'm going to look here in chapter number 4 of Matthew's Gospel. And we've been studying... On Sunday nights, we'll be going through the New Testament, and we, we all know that Matthew was one of the two apostles who wrote the Gospels. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew and John were both apostles. Luke and Mark were not. They were disciples. Uh, they were uh, very close with the apostles, but they were not one of the, the chosen original twelve there. Uh, that, that Christ chose, and Matthew was. And, and we know that Matthew uh, was a publican, and he was a tax collector, and he was a Jewish man who wrote primarily to the Jewish people and presented Jesus Christ as the Messiah, as the King of the Jews. And so you'll find that in Matthew, and we'll actually see that uh, even tonight as we read chapter number 4, and Matthew makes reference to Christ being the King of the Jews. In Matthew chapter number 4, and I'm going to look at verse number 18 and 19, then we'll, we'll go to the Lord in prayer and pray for the message. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he say, saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you, Lord, for who you are and what you stand for. We thank you, Lord, that we can feel your presence here tonight. Thank you, dear Lord, that we have the liberty to preach. I ask you, dear Lord, to give me the words to say. Lord, you know the hearts of them who are listening tonight, dear God. I pray, dear Lord, that you would convict them where conviction is needed. Lord, that there wouldn't be one person um, listening to this message, your message, that would leave here tonight, Lord, that would go to sleep tonight without getting their heart right with you. And I pray, dear God, that you would just fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, help them to see past me. Help them to look past uh, my imperfections, Lord. And, Lord, that they would just see, uh, feel you and see you through your word, dear Lord. You would uh, just touch them. And we pray, Lord, for anywhere else tonight, Lord, that your word is being preached, your, your name is being lifted up, that you would touch the man of God and give him power from on high. Give him unction, dear Lord. Give him that, the power that he needs to proclaim your word. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we come here, book of Matthew, and I want to look at three things by way of introduction about Matthew chapter number 4. Three specific things I want to look at by way of introduction, just kind of to introduce you to um, the, the, the message tonight. Number one, let's look at his ministry. Let's look at the ministry of Jesus Christ. As we all know, he's born in Bethlehem. His childhood was in Nazareth. Uh, he was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. Uh, we know that he was tempted in the wilderness. And we're given an account about how he goes um, and he's introduced as the Lamb of God, as John the Baptist. And we know how he goes to Cana and performs his first miracle. He, he turns the water into wine. And we, we know about how he drives the money chargers out. He does it again later, but he does it um, even before his public ministry there in his hometown area. Uh, we know about how he talks to Nicodemus and how he tells him you must be born again. And we know about how he baptized people in the Jordan River and the woman at the well of Samaria. And now Jesus comes to Capernaum. And um, even before then, when he's, um, after he talks to the woman there, we know how he goes out into the wilderness and he's tempted of the devil. And now he comes to Capernaum and now he's going to make his ministry public. And now he begins to, to preach. And we know he's already performed miracles and 
He's already had people who challenge him, and, and, and we know that uh, Matthew's going to record more of that because Matthew's writing to the Jews and is dealing about his hometown. However, if you go to the book of Mark, chapter, what you find in chapter 4 of Matthew is in chapter 1 of Mark. He gets right to the point because he's preaching to the Romans there. And so, Christ here, His ministry, He's going to begin His public ministry, and it starts out here in chapter number 4. And number 2, by way of introduction, we see His message. Look, if you would, at verse number 17. It says, From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We're looking at Christ and His ministry. We're looking at, at about 30 years of age. He makes His ministry public. And then by way of introduction, we're going to look at His message. His ministry is now public. Now He's beginning to preach. And the greatest preacher to ever live, the first message He ever preached was about repentance. That word repentance, repent, means to have a change of mind toward sin and towards God. That's what repentance is. Repentance is not going from unbelief to belief. It's not about uh, reformation or, or doing this certain thing. What repentance is, is changing your mind towards sin and God. Bruce Lackey said it's a change of mind that results in a change of life. You change your mind towards sin, meaning the Holy Spirit of God puts an individual under conviction. Paul said it in Romans. He said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You're convicted that you're a sinner. And then the, gospel, the, the, the Bible tells you that the wages, the payment of sin is death. And that's where repentance comes in. When a person gets saved, repentance is a necessity of salvation. When a person gets saved, they have a change of mind towards sin. They turn away from that sin. They're sorry for their sins. And they turn to God. They turn to Jesus Christ. He is God. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you're trying to get to heaven any other way, you're going to be very, very disappointed when you stand before an Almighty God and have to give an account of your sins. God cannot allow sin into heaven. That's what the Bible says. That's not Dean Carmichael's doctrine. That's not Victory Baptist Church. That's what the Bible says. But the Bible does say, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Bible teaches that repentance is a necessity of salvation. Jesus preached repentance. John the Baptist preached repentance. Paul preached repentance. Peter preached repentance. The disciples preached repentance. Peter said that God uh, is not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. How does a person get saved? They repent. They repent of their sins. They ask Jesus Christ to save them. They accept Him as their Lord and personal Savior. That's how a person gets saved. That's what the Bible says. And Jesus, He preached, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. What that means is, it was at hand in the person of the king. Like I said, who is this gospel? Who is Matthew? He's presenting Jesus Christ as the King of the Jews, as the Messiah. And Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven. The King is present. He's a King of kings and Lord of lords. He's saying, repent, turn away, follow me. Repent, I'm here, I'm the King of the Jews. He's telling them that. We see His ministry. He's making it public. Then we look at his message. His very first message is on repentance. We have preachers who stay away from repentance. They don't preach repentance as a necessity of salvation. They don't preach repentance about Christian fellowship. They preach to just believe. Yet our Savior preached his very first message on repentance. 
See also, by way of introduction, His men. This is referring to His disciples. This is referring to His followers. If you look here in Matthew chapter 4, look what it says here in verse number 18. After Jesus is done preaching, it says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And He saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. In John chapter 1, you don't have to turn there if you want. If you just want to listen to me, that's fine. But it's just a couple books over. John chapter 1. And in verse number 35, I'm going to read 35 through 42. John records the first encounter Jesus has with Andrew and Peter. John chapter 1, verse 35. Again, the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. And then it goes on to tell how he followed, excuse me, how he called Philip, and Philip would follow him. But this is the first encounter that Jesus had with Andrew and Peter. And how Andrew told Peter, We found them. We found the Messiah. We found the Christ. So they knew Jesus. They knew who He was. And He knew them. And then He comes up to them here in Capernaum, there at Galilee, there at the... And He said, in verse number 19, Follow Me, and I will make you fishers of men. title of my message tonight, two words, simple title, Follow Jesus. There's a lot of people meeting around churches all over the world, religious centers, churches, temples, whatever you want to call them. And they're following all kinds of things. They're following all kinds of people, religious people. They're following after uh, rituals and traditions. And, uh, you know, uh, cults are following after their leader. You know, the Buddhists are following Buddha. Christians, we follow after Christ. There's a tomb and it's empty because the one we follow is sat at the right hand of the Father. The one we follow on the third day got up. Death couldn't hold him. The grave, grave couldn't hold him. Death couldn't defeat him. Why? Because he's God. And Jesus looked at them and he said, Follow me. Friends, if there's one thing we need to be reminded of in this world, is that we need to follow Jesus. If there's one thing this world needs, they need to turn to Christ. If there's one thing a Christian needs to be reminded of, is that we're saved because of Christ. Is that we're saved to serve Christ. We're saved to follow Christ. Not follow a crowd. Look over here in Matthew chapter 4, our main text. Verse number 25. And there followed him a great multitude of people from Galilee, from Decapolis, from Jerusalem, from Judea, from beyond Jordan. This is here in Capernaum. And in John chapter number 6, when Jesus is given the discourse of the bread of life, they said over here in John chapter 6, it said, and let me find the verse here, in verse number 66, from that time many of his disciples went back 
and walk no more with him. He told them he was the bread of life. He told them where he's from. He told them he was God. He told them everything. And they said this is a hard saying. Why? They were following the crowd. There was a big buzz. There was a big commotion going on. So they all followed after him. There was all these miracles. There was all these great things. And they were just so marveled. So what did they do? They ran after him. But when they heard his message, they went the other way. I don't know why I turned from it, but then uh, Jesus looked at his disciples there in John chapter six, and he looked at his, he looked at them. And he said, "Will ye also go away?" And this very same man, who Jesus told him and his brother to follow him, and the Bible says they dropped their nets and they followed Jesus. This very same man named Simon Peter said, "Lord," in verse number sixty-eight, "To whom shall we go? Thou hast the words." of eternal life. You want to go to heaven when you die? Follow Jesus. Go to Him. Turn from your sin. Accept Him as your Lord and Savior. You want to be a Christian who has a life worth living, who pleases the Lord, who's an encouragement to the brethren, who, who lets the Holy Spirit of God guide you and you don't quench the Holy Spirit, you don't grieve the Holy Spirit. You're a blessing to the brethren when you come to church. You want to do that? You want to be a light to a lost and dying world? Follow Jesus. We need to follow Him. We need to put our eyes on Him. This same man who uh, Jesus told him and his brother to follow me. When Jesus walked on the sea, that's what the Bible says. Peter walked on the water. The Bible says Jesus walked on the sea. I don't know if you ever caught that before. Jesus is God. He allowed Peter to walk in that one little area. He's walking on the water. He's just a man. He had no power. But Jesus walked on the sea. Because He's God. He's the Christ. The Son of God. And when Peter got his eyes off Jesus, what did he do? He sank. And he said, Lord, save me. The Bible says, and immediately Jesus saved him. Follow after Jesus. Don't get your eyes on this world. Don't get distracted by this world. Don't follow after the crowd. Don't follow after some man. After some couple. Don't, don't worship a, a, a movement or a person. Follow Jesus. John, the, the, the Apostle John, says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus Christ has always been. He's God Almighty. That's what the Bible teaches. All things were made by Him and for Him. We need to follow Him. And i got three main points tonight. If we want to follow Jesus tonight, He wants three things, many things, but I just want to narrow it down to three. And I want to use this verse here in our text in Matthew chapter 4. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. If you want to follow Jesus tonight, number one, He wants your trust. Verse number 19. Follow me. That's what he said. That word follow means to go or come after a person or thing proceeding ahead. Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He's always been. And we know Mary gave... Uh, gave birth to Him as He was manifested in the flesh, fulfilled the prophecy of the Bible, because the first Adam failed. The Bible says there's two Adams. The first Adam sinned. He failed in the garden. He willfully disobeyed God. We're all sinners. There's nothing mankind can do to work our way to heaven. There's nothing we can do. So the second Adam, Jesus Christ, God the Son was manifested in the flesh, born of a virgin, lived 33 years on this earth, died on a cross for your sins. And on the third day, He rose again. About 40, 50 days later, ascended up and sat down at the right hand of the Father. Why did He sit down? Because His sacrifice was perfect. It is finished. If you don't believe in eternal security, why did Jesus Christ sit down? I can't answer that. 
What could the priests not do in the Old Testament? What were they constantly doing? What did Jesus Christ do? He sat down. We need to follow Him. I, I mentioned earlier in, over there in the, the crowd that followed Him. How we don't want to follow the crowd. We don't want to follow a movement. We don't want to follow some man. We want to follow Christ. In order to follow Him, in order for Him to lead us and guide us, and He told us in His Word, He told His disciples there that He would send a comforter, and that's the Holy Spirit of God. In order to follow the Lord, we're going to have to trust Him. If we're going to follow Him tonight, number one, He wants your trust. Famous verses there, and I'll read them. Uh, that a lot of people use these as their, their life verse. Probably one of the most famous verses in all the Bible. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. We're going to follow the Lord. We need to trust Him. And y'all heard me, I, I give these illustrations, but y'all heard me give this one before. And it may be cheesy and corny, but it's something you can remember. If you've seen that movie, uh, Indiana Jones and the, uh, no, no, help me, Last Crusade, there how he's going, and he's going to go across that, that cave, and in order... Uh, to, to get there to the Holy Grail, he has to literally step out into nothing. And I know it's a Hollywood movie. I know that. But it shows him literally step out into nothing. And as soon as he does, he steps on something. Why? Because he's having faith. And I know it's just a movie. It's just an illustration. But that's why putting trust in the Lord, you have to put faith in Him. If we lean into our own understanding, that will get us in trouble. Well, I don't understand. I don't know why this is happening. I don't know, because the Bible says, trust in the Lord. He said, follow me. He didn't lay out a, you know, he didn't say, well, here's going to be your benefits. He didn't lay them out a five-point plan, a 30-year you know, plan, and give them all these different things. Here's why you should follow. He's looked in. They knew about him. Andrew said, I found him. I found the Christ. I found him, the Messiah. And Jesus went up to him and said, follow me. If we're going to follow him, we need to have trust. We need to put faith in him. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please him. Enoch had faith. Enoch walked with God. He followed God. He trusted God. <coughs> Friends, if we're, going to, if we're going to follow after him, we need to trust him. You know, I don't know. Do we have any front seat drivers in here? Anybody? I know some back seat drivers. They're worse. <laughs> front seat's one thing, but the back seat drivers are worse. I won't say his name, but his initials are Coburn Dean Carmichael Sr. <laughs> I do the same thing. We all do. It's just human nature, right? I, uh, I'm not. This is going to be a shock to some of y'all. I'm not the best with directions. So as I'm driving, my wife, she won't be a front seat driver, but she'll remind me, hey, you're going to get over all five lanes and turn right here really fast, aren't you? Oh, yeah! And, you know. <laughs> but sometimes it's human nature. We like to take the wheel, right? We like to, well, let me, you know, here, give it to me, I'll take it. Let me handle it. If you want something done right, right? But in order to follow the Lord, you got to trust Him. What did Paul tell Timothy? He said, preach the Word, be instant, in season and out of season. In other words, Timothy, there are going to be times where the Word is out of season. People do not want to hear the Word of God. There will be dry spells. There will be times you will be challenged. There will be times when you will be hated. But continue to preach the Word. Continue to live for the Lord. 
continue to follow after the Lord. Follow me. Number one, follow Jesus. Number one, He wants your trust. Number two, He wants your time. He wants you to trust in Him, but guess what? He also wants your time. If you're going to follow Him, you've got to spend time with Him. Uh, look, if you would, in uh, Luke chapter number 10. Luke chapter number 10. Almost turned right to it. Next book over. <coughs> Again, that word follow means go or come after a person or thing proceeding ahead. And here in Luke chapter number 10, we're talking about how the Lord wants our time. And we all know this story. This is the story in Luke chapter number 10 about uh, Lazarus and, and his, his sisters. And I hope I wrote down the, the right reference here. The Luke chat. Yes, I believe I did. Uh, Luke chapter 10, verse number 38 through 42. We all know how uh, Lazarus has died and Jesus waits a certain time period and then He comes. And so there would be no doubt who healed Lazarus. Jesus comes at that certain time and He says, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus is, is, is uh, raised from the dead. We know that wonderful story there. But here I want to put, we're talking about uh, how the Lord wants our time. We're going to follow Him. And I want to look at Lazarus' two sisters here, Martha and Mary. Verse 38 through 42. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. So we all know that story about Lazarus. These are his two sisters. This is a story about them. And Martha, she's the worker. She's doing everything for the Lord. I mean, she's serving, she's doing all of it. And she's wondering, why is Mary leaving her that she has to serve all by herself? Look what Jesus said. But one thing is needful, and Mary had chosen that good part. Where was Mary? She's at the feet of Jesus. Friends, we're going to follow Jesus. We need to spend time with Him. J. Vernon McGee, my favorite. I love J. Vernon McGee. He says, I'm going to quote him, he said, Friend, have you ever tried being alone? That is where God will meet with you. Take the Word of God, go off alone with Him, it will do you a lot of good. Go to church. Hear your preacher. Go to the, the revivals. Go to all the, the, the Bible studies that are, I mean, that are led by uh, a knowledgeable, um, mature Christians who know the Word. Go to those. Go to the prayer meetings. Go to the Bible studies. Go to those things. Go with a dear brother or sister who's close to the Lord and have some time with them and talk things out and pray about things. Enjoy that. Grow with the brethren in church. Do all those things. But you know what we need to do? What we really need to do is we need to get alone with God and just have some time with us and Him. Get alone in that prayer closet. Get alone in that office. Get alone in that side room. Get alone somewhere. Take your Bible and just seek the Lord. Just talk to the Lord. Let Him talk to you. Take some time while you're following the Lord. Don't be so busy following Jesus that you forget to spend time with Him. Don't be so busy studying for that Sunday school lesson and getting ready for VBS and just getting over Community Day and then getting ready for Trunk or Treat after that. I'm running y'all ragged, aren't I? I said, you know, maybe I should have done it. I told Laura, I said, maybe we should have done it in July so we would have had more time to recover. Don't get so caught up doing those things 
Don't get so caught up coming to Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Don't get so caught up in that, you forget to spend time with Jesus. You forget to sit at His feet and not just spend time with Jesus, but spend, admit He's Lord. He's the Lord of your life. Not just read through it and say, okay, yeah, yeah, verse number 34, okay. Dear Lord, bless this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Get up and go. Worship Him. Repent your sins. Spend time with Him. If we're going to follow Him, well, we need, there's going to be, we need to spend some time, amen. Not only does He want our uh, trust, not only does He want our time, but also He wants our talents. What was John and James and Andrew and Peter? They were all fishermen. The Bible says in Matthew, says in verse number 18, for the very, the very last part of the verse, for they were fishers. That's what they did. They were fishermen. That was their trade. They weren't out there on a Saturday, you know, taking them, you know, man, I hate my job, you know, going out there and shooting the breeze. That's not what they were doing. They were fishers. They were fishermen. That was their trade. That was their talent. They were good at it. The Bible says there was a drought. And the Lord told them to drop their nets in there. We all know the story about how they couldn't get the nets up. But that was their trade. That's what they did. And... The Lord went up to him and he said, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So you're not going to be doing this. You'll be serving me. Friends, God wants our talents. We have, uh, we, before I say that, we don't want to confuse gifts with talents. You know, um, but we have people in our church who have talents. You know, Miss Lori, my mom, Darlene, they have musical talent. There's people, uh, uh, Cindy, Barbara, we, people who have singing talent. They can sing. I have my two songs that if I have to lead, I can get up here and <laughs> mumble on through it. But there's some people, they have a talent. They can get up and they can sing. And I, friends, if you have a talent, whatever it may be, don't waste your talents glorifying the world. Don't waste your talents glorifying yourself. Man, glorify God. Use them for Christ. Exalt Him. If you're going to follow after Jesus, He wants your talents. There's a lot of people, they feel they can't serve the Lord, they feel like they can't do certain things in the church, trust me, God has a plan, God has something for everyone to do. He has a will for everybody. Boy, we just don't want uh, you know, five or six people in our church serving the Lord. We want everybody to serve the Lord. We want everybody to get involved. You want to follow after Jesus? You want to stay close to Him? Boy, get up in that choir and sing. Stand up. Thank the Lord. Go out and do things for Him. Give Him the glory. The Bible says over in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. There are some people, I mean, that uh, throughout different churches, there are some people they are really good with money. So they're able to be used in the church. They're able to use that talent and work in the church. There are some people who are really good at organizing things and helping things. There's many things that people can do to help the church. There are people who they are workers and they, they love getting involved. And, and I tell you, every time I have a sign-up sheet up here, there's, there's different people. They come in, they sign up constantly. Why? Because they're following after the Lord. They want to please the Lord. We want to give that to the Lord. We don't want to waste... God has given you a wonderful talent. He's given you something that you can use. Don't spend your time wasting it out. Don't spend all your energy. Don't spend all your time out wasting it for the world. Jesus said, Follow me, and I will make you 
fishers of men. Instead of bringing in these fish, you'll be going out and you'll be spreading my, my word, my light, and you'll be bringing men in to me. That's what he's saying. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10.31, Whether ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. It's hard to follow after the Lord if we're giving somebody else all the glory. Personality worship. Man, it's a big thing. There's a lot of preachers tonight who are getting all the glory. There's a lot of musicians. People won't hear somebody preach, but boy, if that church group is playing, they'll go listen to them sing. And they'll glorify them, and they'll exalt them, and they'll stand up and give them a standing ovation. And they'll praise them. Friends, we need to praise the Lord. We need to glorify Him. If we're coming to church... If we're just going through the motions, we're, just going, we're wasting our time. But if we're coming to church, on the other hand, if we're just here to glorify somebody else, we're also wasting our time. you got some churches, they're dead, they're dry, they're going through the motions, they're wasting their time. Then you got other churches, there's all kinds of commotion going on. But yet, they're glorifying some man. Waste of time. They're glorifying some group. Waste of time. They glorify Jesus. We're going to follow after Him. Amen. By way of closing here, book of John chapter number 6. A lot of people followed the crowd there. Then Jesus said to the 12, verse number 67, they had that great crowd was following Jesus. That big old great crowd. And He began to tr preach the truth of His Word. And they all, a lot of them turn away. And he looks over at the original 12 there and he says, in verse number 67, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. No one's looking around. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. Let's have a quiet time with the Lord. Who are you following tonight? Only your heart knows that. Jesus went up to Andrew and Peter. And he said, follow me. If we're going to follow the Lord, He needs our trust, He needs our time, He needs our talents. They worked. They had to work for that. They were hard workers. They had to go up there and they were just constantly uh, working and working and working. And Jesus said, take all that and follow me. He needs workers tonight. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. That's a follower. That's somebody who's devoted their life to the Lord. That's a worker that's somebody who's not lazy. That's not somebody for self-glorification. That is a worker. That is someone who's following after Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, I pray that you would touch this message. Lord, use it for your honor and your glory. I pray, Lord, for each and every person who's here tonight, each and every person who's listening. Lord, uh, on Facebook, uh, where, uh, Lord, that you would just give them a special blessing, Lord, that you would convict where conviction is needed. And I pray, dear God, that you would... Uh, touch us, keep us safe, and bring us back in the next appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright, if you would, come on up, and we're going to pray. We're going to close. Jesus paid it all, all to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, He washed it white as snow. Thank you for listening to Preach the Word with Brother Dean Carmichael from Greensboro. You can email Brother Dean, Preach the Word 87 at Outlook.com. Preach the Word 87 at Outlook.com. You also can follow our dear friend Brother Dean Carmichael on Facebook, Facebook.com forward slash Dean Carmichael Jr.